All right, so today we're going to talk about radicals. That's square root, and that's also talking about cube roots. Okay, so when I say radicals, I mean this symbol where you've got this. Cool? Now, we know this as being square root, right? Okay, and really, there's a 2 right here. We just, mathematicians are lazy and we leave it off. Okay, but if you see it blank, it's square root. If you see a three in this little cubby hole, what is that called? A cube root, okay? All right, so the opposite of squaring a number is called taking the square root. Okay, so for instance, what's three squared? What's three squared? Nine. And that's going to give me, if I took the square root of nine, what would that give me? Three. Okay, so squaring and squaring, square rooting are opposite, it's kind of like multiplication and division. You're doing the opposite um, operation. You cannot take the square root of a negative number. You cannot take the square root of a negative number. So if you get the square root of negative four, that's going to be no solution. Notice how there is a negative inside the radical. If it was outside the radical, that would be okay. If it's inside, no bueno. Cool? Okay, so examples. The square root of 16 is 4 because 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is equal to 16. The square root of 25 is 5 because 5 squared is 5 times 5, which is 25. The square root of 100 is 10 because 10 squared is 10 times 10, which is 100. Okay, this is where your multiplication skills are kind of important. These things right here are called perfect squares. So if you ever hear somebody say perfect squares, this is the list that they're talking about. Because if I take the square root of four, what do I get? If I take the square root of four, what do I get? Two. If I take the square root of 16, what do I get? Okay, so these give you whole numbers when you take the square root. That's why they're called perfect squares. Okay. Now down here, it says, what is the square root of four? That would give me two, right? Okay. And we could continue practicing that, but I feel like at this point, you get it. Now, when we take the square root of a number, we say the answer could be positive or negative because when you square it, a negative, um, if you square a negative, the answer is positive. So for instance, if we were solving out something and we had something like this, um here and we took the square root of both sides we could have a positive and a negative version so when you're solving you're going to have two solutions okay and we'll get to that in just a second today we're kind of focusing more on simplifying okay i'm going to go ahead and talk about cube root as well so cube root is the opposite of cubing something. So what's four to the third power? 64. And when I take the cube root of 64, I get four. I do not expect you to know all of these perfect cubes. So these are the perfect cubes. I do expect you to know the first four. These first four, you should kind of have memorized. Like, you should know what two to the third power is, okay? Do we understand that? Okay, you have to pay really close attention to whether or not it's a square root or if it's a cube root. Those are different things, okay? Now, you can take the cube root of a negative number. The answer will be a negative. So if I took the cube root of negative 64, I'm gonna get negative four because negative four to the third power gives me negative 64. So let's try to simplify the following. Okay, what's the square root of 49? 
What's the square root of 49? Mm -hmm. Square root of 49. 49. So the square root of 49 is 7. So this is where your multiplication skills are real important. Okay? If you're not that great at multiplication, you got to practice. Okay? What about the next one? Square root of 81. Square root of 25. What about the square root of 64? Not eight. Go back. Cube root, sorry. Cube root of 64. There you go. Okay, do we see how that works? Do you wanna try the next few? You go all the way down on the left column. Take a moment, try that. Um, I do want to point something out. If you're doing like a handheld calculator or you're doing like your phone calculator, um, on your phone, if you try to take the cube root, you have to turn your phone sideways to get the um, extra keyboard. Um, if you're doing it on Desmos, which I highly suggest you practice this, but if you do it on Desmos, you can go in here and you can do cube root. I'm sorry. There it is. So if you type CBRT, that pops up the cube root. What you can also do if you ever forget that, you can go into the keyboard, go to functions, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and it's this middle one, and then type the little three right there. Okay? And then you can type the number right in here, and it does it for you. Okay, so again, if you're using a handheld calculator, it might be a little bit different. I think on the yellow ones, you have to hit math and then go from there. Not sure, I have to look at that one. But for Desmos, it would have to be CBRT, okay? Okay, here. All right, what did we get for number nine? Okay, what about 11? What about 13? What about 15? What about 17? Say again. Okay. So everybody see how we got that? Are there, are there any questions about it? Okay, cool. Pretty confident in this. You can plug it into your calculator, right? Here's just a little table of the square root. Um, I would reference this often if you can, just so you can see them um, as much as you can, because if you can memorize this, it makes the next thing a little bit easier. Here are the perfect cubes. So if you're not sure about them, here they are, okay? Okay, so the square of a number is the number times itself. The cube of a number is multiplied by twice by itself, okay? So now we're going to do the opposite direction. So what's four squared? What's four times four? 16. What's six cubed? Six cubed is 216. So again, remember, six cubed means six times six times six. Does that make sense? It's not six times three, it's six times six times six. Okay. What about 10 to the third? Not 30, that's a thousand. Remember that's 10 times 10 times 10. Can you take a moment, can you do D through F? All right, let's check. What's 20 squared? 400. What's 8 cubed? Uh, say it again. 512? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I didn't check this one. Sorry. 17 squared? 289. Okay. What about 9 squared? 7 squared? What about 5 cubed? What about uh, 24 cubed? Say it again. 
24. Wow. I don't know where I got that from. 24? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So it's again. There we go. Cool. But you want to get to a point where you can kind of do like the little numbers quickly. Um, because again, when you're simplifying, you need to know those factors. Okay. Can you go ahead and take a moment? Can you do, um, let's do the whole row, row of G. Go this way. Whole row of G. All right, check your work. I got six, eight, nine, five, 18, and 23. Gucci. Okay, again, use your calculator on that one for the bigger numbers, because I, I don't expect you to know what the square root of 324 is, okay? I did, that would be crazy. All right, go ahead and take a moment, try J. The row of J. Notice how that says, what'd you get? Five, 10, 4, 3, 2, and then what's the cube root of 216? Is it 6? Yeah. Okay. Again, pay attention to if it's a square root or a cube root because that makes a difference. No, you don't just take the number and divide by 3. No, you don't just take the number and divide by 2. That's not how you get it. Okay. Questions? Okay. All right, if I had something like this, where I had a negative on the outside, okay, what's going to happen is I just kind of ignore that negative. And what's the square root of 10? I'm sorry, what's the square root of 100? So this would be negative 10. Does that make sense? Okay, on uh, number two, if I take the square root of 9, and there's a negative chilling out front, that's going to give me negative three. You just have to be mindful of, is the negative inside, outside, et cetera? If it's inside, what do we have? No solution. No. If it's inside, there's a negative on the inside, that's going to be no solution. That's no bueno. None of these are like that, though. Okay. Go ahead and take a moment. Try. Try this left column. Go ahead and do these. All right, check your work. Should have gotten 11, 5, negative 5, negative 2, 10, negative 12, 12, 0, 3. Ta-da. Cool. Yay. All right, we're not going to worry about that cube root just yet. Um. Go back to the page, you know where we did the multiplication skills? Flip that page over. It's gonna look like this. Okay, so we're going to kind of talk through a couple of like terms that you should know. So this little symbol is called the radical. The number that's underneath is called the radicand. Okay, everybody say radicand. Okay, so if you ever see that word, it's just talking about the number that's underneath. Okay, so the radicand is a perfect square Then you just solve by taking the square root. That's what we've done so far. So what's the square root of 25? What's square root of 81? And the square root of 576? I'm going to tell you it's 24. Okay. So again, those have been perfect squares. But let's say we don't have a perfect square. Okay. And that's where simplifying is going to come into play. So if the radicand is not a perfect square, then we can't just solve because it would give a non-repeating and non-terminating decimal. Instead, we can only simplify the radical expression, okay? So, for instance, if I take the square root of 24, 
I get 4.89 and the decimal keeps going, right? Well, that's not really specific. We want more simplified radical. So let's think, 24. What can we divide 24 by? What's the first number that you think of? Four. Four, okay. So what, 24 divided by four gives me what? Okay, can these numbers be broken down into factors? Yeah, okay, so what can four be broken down into? Okay, can those be broken down anymore? Uh, we can do two and one, but we wanna get to the point where we have prime numbers. Do we know what prime numbers mean? Prime numbers is like seven. You can only multiply one and seven together to get seven. Two, you can only multiply one and two. So one is a factor of that. Does that make sense? Okay. What about six? Can we break that down anymore? Yeah. What do we, what do we get? Okay. And those are prime numbers, right? Okay. Do you remember in Finding Nemo? Yeah. Throwback, right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember in Finding Nemo where he was like, do you have your exit buddy? Do y'all remember that? Okay. First of all, I need to watch Nemo. Second of all, he was like, um, they're in the East Australian current and they're like in the little tide thing and the little turtle. Do you have your exit buddy? Yes. Okay. That one. All right. So you can only exit the radical if you got your exit buddy. Okay. So do you see how there's two of these? They can exit the radical and be outside. And then anything that's left over at the ends of the little tree, we're going to put back in. So we got this three and we got this two. They're going to go back inside. And what's three times two? Six. six. So we got six on the inside. This is the simplified version. Notice how we started with square root of 24 and we ended up with two radical six. Okay. Cool. Maybe. All right, let's take 80 and let's break that one down. Think of factors of 80. What you got? What can we divide 80 by? Eight. And 80 divided by eight gives me what? 10. Can I break eight down anymore? Yeah, what do I get? Four and two. Can I break four down? So what? Okay, and those are all broken down. We're going over to this 10. Can 10 be broken down to so what? Okay. We can only exit the radical if we got our exit buddy. So we've got a pair right here. And we also have another pair right here. And we're left with this five chilling on the inside. Okay, so again, the only exit if I got a pair. What's two times two? Four. And I'm left with five underneath the radical. Does that make sense? Yes, Max. Is he? Okay, so we only want to look at the ends of the tree. This is called a factor tree. We only want to look at the roots. So where do they end up? So four is a little bit higher up, and we broke that down into two and two. That makes sense. Now here's an here's another way you could have done this. If you know your perfect squares, it makes it a little bit easier. So fun fact: if I take the square root of eighty, um, factors of this would be sixteen and five. What's the square root of 16? What's the square root of 16? Notice how I put a four on the outside and what am I left with? And he just leaves underneath the radical. So if you know your perfect squares, you can use that to your advantage. Um, however, if you don't know your perfect squares, that's a problem. If you don't know what factors are of 80, let's say you totally forgot some factors of 80. What you can do is you can come into Desmos. I'm gonna get rid of this and I'll put it back if you need it. 
You're going to come in in Desmos, and let's say you type 80 divided by X. You're going to go to this little gear button, go to your table, and you can create a table where if you multiply these, like 1 times 80, what do you get? What's 2 times 40? 4 times 20? 5 times 16? So that gives you factors of 80. So if you're struggling with those numbers or whatever, boom, there you go. Okay, so you just take the number and divide it by X and then go into the table. Okay, that's for anybody who struggles with factors. Okay, go ahead and try that last one. It's like square root of 200. Go ahead and see if you can simplify that one. Um, I'm going to put this back up. There we go. Go and try 200. All right, so let's see. What factors of 200 did you use? 2 and 100, okay. Can we break down 100 anymore? Into what? 50 and 2. And then can we break 50 down anymore? To what? And can we break 25 down anymore? To what? Fantastic. Okay, so do we see how we have the ends of the tree? And it's okay if you did yours a little different as long as you get to the same answer. Okay, now I'm gonna circle my exit buddies. So two and two, two's gonna come outside. And then we got five and five, and five's gonna come on the outside. And then we're left with that two on the inside, right? So what's two times five? And I'm left with radical two. Now again, you could have gotten up here and said, hey, I know that 100 is a perfect square. Well, what's the square root of 100? 10, and then you could have pulled him outside. Max, what's up? Okay. Are we okay on this? So I'm going to pass out some there. So when we multiply radicals, we have to have the same um, index. Okay, we have to have the same index. And what I mean by that is it has to have the same, like, like we have to multiply two square roots together. That's fine. If you multiply a square root and a cube root, that's no bueno. Okay. All right, so steps, you're going to multiply the inside. Yep, do y'all need one more? Okay. You're going to multiply the inside, and then you're going to multiply the outside, and I'm coming to you. And then you're going to simplify. On number one, we're going to multiply the insides. What's three times three? Nine. And we multiply the outsides. What's one times one? Okay, so we're just going to leave that alone. Can we simplify this? What's the square root of nine? Ta -da. Okay. On the next one, what's 12 times 15? What's 12 times 15? 180. 180. And then what's 4 times 2? 8. Now, can we simplify this 180? Can we break it down? Yeah. Okay, watch what happens. Give me a factor of 180. 90 and 2. Can I break 90 down more? Into what? 30 and 3. Can I break 30 down more? To what? 15 and 2. Can I bring 15 down? Mm. Oh. 5 and 3. Now, we're looking for our exit buddies. So we've got 2 and 2. And we've got 3 and 3. 
So we have eight on the outside already times two times three, and we're left with a five on the inside. So what's eight times two times three? So that's going to give me 48 square root of five. Um, this next one's not that bad, though. Um, you're going to distribute this guy. Okay. Now, remember, you can only multiply the outsides together and the inside parts together. Okay. So, for instance, when we multiply square root of three times three, we get three square root of three. Okay. I hope we're seeing that. We can only multiply numbers that are inside the radical together and the numbers that are outside the radical. Now, this next part, when we multiply square root of 3 times square root of 16, um, 6, we're going to get the square root of 18. Now, we want to simplify this, though, to see if we can combine like terms. Okay, so can I break 18 down for what? Say again. Nine and two. Can I break nine down into what? Okay, I can only exit if I have an exit buddy, right? So this is going to give me three square root of two and three square root of three. Can I combine these? The answer is going to be no because it has to be the same underneath the radical. We're going to distribute. And 3 times 3 is going to give me what? Okay. 3 times negative 4 square root of 3. Remember, we're going to multiply the outsides. So 4 times negative 4. I'm sorry. 3 times negative 4 is going to give me negative 12 square root of 3. Scru square root of 3 times 3 is going to give me 3 square root of 3. And negative 4 square root of 3 times square root of 3 is going to give me negative 4 square root of 9. Now, that looks like a hot mess. We definitely can simplify. We can add and subtract things that have the same radical. For instance, we have negative 12 plus three, that's gonna give us negative nine square root of three. And then over here, we have the square root of nine. Well, we know that that's three, right? So we can pull that out of the radical and that's gonna give me negative four times three, which is gonna give me negative 12. Nine minus 12 is gonna give me negative three. I know that one was a little tricky. Um, most of them are not going to look like that, but you could have that happen. Okay, do you all see where the multiplication skills really have to come in handy? Okay, we definitely need to make sure that that is solid because otherwise it takes you a really long time to do this problem. Okay, and there's no shortcut. This doesn't get easier miraculously. Okay.